again, this is the first video in the kinetics unit. Here we're going to be focused on what does it really mean when we talk about a reaction rate, how do we interpret that, and how are we going to use stoichiometry to convert from one substance to another. And so for us, we're going to just be here. We're going to define reaction rate, we're going to talk about how a reaction might speed up or slow down, and then we are going to um, move into the more complicated things later. In fact, one of the biggest obstacles to this unit is the vast number of equations that we use. And probably the biggest obstacle is just going to be figuring out which equation to use and so on. Um, but we're going to be working with that equation sheet in the next video. So, Okay, so when we're talking about reaction rates, now your text gets into how do you really rec measure a reaction rate uh, experimentally. And I'm not going to get into that here because you can read that, but I want to talk about the true definition and how to use it in a calculation. And so in general, when we're talking about a reaction, the way that we can tell its speed is by monitoring either a reactant or a product. And so we're going to measure that either by the appearance of a product or the disappearance of a reactant. And the idea is to get it that rate, that rate as early as possible. Um, it's usually an instantaneous or an initial rate of reaction. And that's because rates are always fast. It's at the beginning. They tend to slow down in the long run. So we're going to consider the, uh, the appearance or disappearance, and then it's going to be in terms of concentration. Now here we're going back to molarity. Uh, it's just tried and true unit. They, it, it's preferred. And we're going to be doing that over some period of time. And so the rate of a reaction is just equal to the concentration change from one time to another over the change in time from one time to another. Now, it doesn't really matter if we're talking about the disappearance of reactant. Um, this is going to be a smaller number than this, so it'll be a negative. So the, you know, if it's we're talking about a reactant, it's going to be the rate is equal to negative delta molarity of the reactant over time. Um, now, if we're talking about a product, a product is going to be forming. So we're going to end up having a higher concentration as we move on. So it would be, you know, a positive, which we would leave the plus off um, over some change in time. Okay? So for example, here we've got a reaction where we've got two moles of ammonia react, uh, decomposing into one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen gas. Titan, hush. <clears throat> no. Now initially, just like with any other reaction, you have no product. Your product starts way down at zero, and it is only going to form as you uh, proceed with the reaction. On the other hand, you begin with all reactants. So your reactant starts at, you know, 100% or so, and it will decrease over time. Now, you'll notice that these are curved lines. That indicates that the reaction rate is not constant. It tends to slow down um, after a while. Now, there is an exception to that, but usually this is a good rule of thumb, okay? So initially, there's no product. It's all reactant. And the rate is going to be very, very fast compared to what it would be later. I mean, look at how fast this change in time versus this change in time is. And so we'll get into what that does. Now, because reactions change, the reaction rates change, we have to consider the rate at any given point. So we could consider it here, here, here. And because, you know, chemists are essentially mathematicians, they're going to take the tangent to this curve and use that as the, the rate. Um, we are not going to be doing tangents in here. I just want you to see where it comes from and the, the fact that it changes. Uh, for our purposes, I'll give you the rate. You may have to convert between 
substances and that kind of thing, but I'm not going to ask you to get, you know, the slope or a tangent or anything like that. So in general, I just want to point this out really quick. The rate of disappearance, the rate of this reaction, here we've got the disappearance of our reactant, the appearance of our products, okay? Now, in a second, we're going to get into how do you convert. Uh, it's a matter of using stoichiometry here, okay? In fact, can we, yeah, kind of. Um, well, let's go to the next one. It's probably easier to see. So again, guys, when we're talking about rate, um, well, let's, let's go ahead and do this really quick. This is going to be just a stoichiometric problem. You can kind of see the ratio here is 2 to 1 to 3. So if we talk about the rate of ammonia, if we were to gonna change to say nitrogen here, we can kind of see from reaction stoichiometry every time we have two moles of ammonia, I guess I didn't give myself enough room, there's one mole of N2. And so essentially it's going, the rate of appearance of nitrogen is going to be half, one half times the disappearance of ammonia. And if you compare this, you know, 1.94 and 9.7 to the negative 7, these are, it's off by a factor of 2. And this is, you know, half uh, the speed here. Okay, so it, it works out. And so, um, just kind of keep in mind, this is just going to be mole to mole ratios as you're converting between substances. So again, when we're measuring reaction rates, it's just the change in concentration per time. These brackets right here just indicate molarity. Molarity is just moles per liter. And it is either going to be a reactant or a product. It doesn't matter. The only thing that will change is if it's a product, it'll be a positive. If it's a reactant, it'll be a negative because it, the reactant is disappearing, okay? So if we're talking about a reaction like this, one mole of A reacts with two moles of B to produce three moles of C. The, the disappearance of A, again, if we were to use reaction stoichiometry, um, keep, okay. So if we're going to kind of consider reaction rates, if we looked at the speed of B here, I changed my color, um, to go between B and A, you have to say two moles of B for every one mole of A, and it will allow you to kind of use that reaction stoichiometry here. So when you're doing these problems, don't get overly um, bogged down. Um, um, we could also uh, consider it, just just use your mole to mole ratio, okay? Now, when we're talking about a reaction rate, sometimes we want to be able to speed up or slow down a reaction. And the way we can do that is by looking at the things that specifically uh, contribute to reactions. And so here, we need to consider four main things. One is the chemical nature of a reactant. Oops, that's a typo. Um, there we go. So the first is size and surface area, If then the state of matter, and then we'll get into these other ones. So for example, if you kind of think back to that um, lab on limiting reactant in Chem 111, here you had um, foil and copper that was reacted with a single replacement reaction and the pieces of copper were I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry no the pieces of foil were really really tiny and the reason for that was it allowed for a more surface area and because remember the foil tended to be kind of coated in a wax and so the more surface you had the more the acid could really react and get into that aluminum through the wax same thing here this is just an example from your uh, text you have very 
a, a nail here that is reacting with acid and then you have a small pieces of iron that are also reacting with acid. You can kind of see there's very little bubbling here much more violent reaction, much faster reaction happening here. And so that surface area, the smaller size, the larger surface area is going to allow that reaction to happen much faster. Okay. Now, the other thing I want to point out is the state of matter. Thinking back to 111, thinking back to earlier in this unit, remember that solids typically have uh, little to no motion. If they do anything, it's just small vibrations of the particles that are there. On the other hand, liquids have the particles that move past one another and gases have particles that move very quickly. And so if we're talking about liquids and gases, you have more motion, which means the reactants can run into each other. They can react faster because they are moving faster. They're going to come in contact with one another faster. Okay. Now, um, it doesn't mean that solids don't work. I mean, you can see here there's definitely a reaction here. But the idea is the state of matter will influence the reaction rate here. Now, if we're talking about temperature, t the higher the temperature, the faster the kinetic energy. Um, if you can kind of think back to, uh, oh, Chem 111, which unit is that? Um, I think it's unit six, where we're talking about heat versus, oh, heat versus kinetic energy, where you have uh, the idea is the hotter something is, the faster those motions are. And it ends up being something like kinetic energy Let's do this one, is equal to something like one half mass times velocity squared, which you can end up putting the uh, uh, rearranging to get something like uh, where V is equal to 2RT over molar mass, that kind of thing. And so the higher this temperature is in Kelvin, the faster the velocity, the, f the higher your kinetic energy. And so the, the hotter something is, the faster it moves, the more reaction you're going to have. And that's actually one of the reasons if you read your labels for, say, uh, over-the-counter medicines and vitamins, it always tells you not to store it above a certain temperature. And that's because above that temperature, the reaction speeds up enough that it becomes a safety concern. Um, in fact, one of the B vitamins has a cyano group that is active um, in the right form of the vitamin. And it's, you know, harmless because it's bonded unless you heat it up enough that that cyanide group comes off and then you've got a toxic uh, situation. Um, now, I think it's going to make me leave. Um, there it goes. So here we've got a situation where, um, and this is from your boundless text, where low temperature you know, molecules move around a little bit, you get some reactions that are happening. Um, but what's really nice is if you really heat this up, move the temperature up, uh, something like that, the molecules move much faster, you get the reaction happening quicker. Okay? Now, we can also talk about how many reactants are present. You can kind of think about this as, you know, really anywhere that you might be uh, with or without people. The more people in an area, the more likely it is you're going to run into somebody. If you've ever gone to the library and had like a floor to yourself while you're studying, it's almost like you're not going to see anybody. It doesn't matter. That low concentration of personnel really means that you have no interaction that can happen. 
On the other hand, the more reactants you have, the more molecules, the more likely it is you're going to be interacting there. And so if you're trying to study, you don't, wouldn't want that high concentration, possibly, unless you, that's how you like to uh, study. And so here we've got a situation where we can start off with a couple of uh, reactant molecules. And you can kind of see they bounce around. They don't really interact immediately. It's a matter of when do you encounter one another. And so um, these other reactants would have to bounce around until they see each other. On the other hand, if you add in a bunch of reactant molecules like this, there's a lot more you're going to get the reaction occurring to completion much much faster okay so this is again one of those situations where it's kind of nice to see a reaction happen so we would maybe use higher concentrations than we might need just to see it happen quicker Okay, so the next thing that will contribute to a faster reaction is the presence of a catalyst. A catalyst, we're going to talk about catalysts um, in the last video of this unit, but it's kind of nice because a catalyst is a substance that will increase the reaction rate without being consumed by the reaction itself. Now it can do this in several different ways. It can give it a new transient state. It can allow for a different pathway. It can destabilize the bonds of the reactants, hold the reactants in proximity. There's all kinds of different things that can happen. But the idea is the catalyst lowers the overall activation energy and allows the reaction to happen faster. It's kind of like, um, you know, how much motivation do you need to get off the couch and do something? If you don't have anybody nagging you, it might take you a lot of energy to be like, okay, let's go do the dishes. On the other hand, if you know your mother is coming to visit, you might have the catalyst you need to really lower the motivation, make you go clean the house so that she doesn't yell at you. Now, what all this really means is reaction rates are a stoichiometric calculation that you can use your mole to mole ratio in. Reaction rates are going to be fastest when you have a gas or aqueous liquid states of matter. They're also going to be faster when you have a large surface area of a solid. The higher your temperature, the, hot, the faster those molecules move, the faster it's going to happen. Um, and then the more concentration, the more molecules to react, the faster they encounter one another. And if you have a catalyst, those, that will also speed up your reaction rate. That is it for this unit. We are going to move from here into rate laws which is fun.